and Nick Mosby. I see he just joined us. We have now Council President Mosby on the line. We have Principal Paul Perry, who is principal of uh, West Side Skill Center in Edmondson High School. For those of you who know about one or the other, uh, and then we have Mr. Malcolm, Mr. Gregory Malcolm, who is uh, president owner of Ironshore Contracting. And the focus of this town hall tonight is local hiring and our jobs package that is coming out of the council president's office. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to council president Nick Mosby. Thank you, Derek, uh, for setting this up. Thank you, everybody, for joining, especially you, Mr. Perry, as well as uh, Mr. Malcolm. Hello, everyone. I'm Council President Nick Mosby, and you're on the local hiring town hall. Um, now, when we talk about the issues in Baltimore, particularly what we see through the media, you know, a lot of times we hear some of the devastation, decay, and violence in our communities. Well, we know at the core of that is really opportunity. Uh, and what better way of talking about how we sustainably drive down crime, how we sustainably see the growth of our city, how we sustainably put Baltimore in the light that we all understand and know Baltimore should become um, uh, without talking about our young folks, literally the foundation of that. So the sustainability of that growth uh, starts with providing real opportunities for our young folks. Um, now, when we talk about local hiring, if you've seen on the Board of Estimates every Wednesday at 9 o'clock, we constantly scrutinize contracts um, that the city's given out. Millions upon millions of dollars, uh, sometimes going to companies uh, far away from Baltimore City, um, companies that have not necessarily lived up to the end of the bargain associated with participation here in the city of Baltimore, uh, companies that just are naturally culturally uh, connected to the city of Baltimore. Uh, so we're constantly scrutinizing those contracts to ensure that we're providing real opportunities for local, small, black, and women-owned companies here and minority companies here in the city of Baltimore. Uh, that is the point of that. So what better way than establishing a conduit or a pipeline for our young folks so we can show them the jobs of tomorrow and give them access and training today to provide, uh, again, opportunities to expose them to those careers and hopefully uh, what their appetite so they can grow interest. Um, one thing that we're going to talk about a lot tonight is Baltimore City CTE programs, career, career technology education programs, uh, which are currently in the city, city of Baltimore. Uh, so I'm excited to get into the discussion. I'm excited to hear from uh, brother Mr. Perry as well as Mr. Malcolm. Uh, and at this point, I will turn it back to you, Derek. Okay, thank you, Mr. Council President. What we'll do then is we will go over to Mr. Perry first. And Mr. Perry, if you could just give us just an overview of uh, your work as a principal, overview of some of the programs you have and you offer at your school. And then from there, after we get an overview, overview from you, then we'll go over to you, Mr. Malcolm, to get an overview of your vision and your side of things from an industry perspective. Uh, what your company does and how you have gotten into that line of work and uh, some background on you as well. So for you, Mr. Perry, you're up. Well, good evening, everyone. Council President Mosby, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to highlight the, the, the programs that we have at Edmondson Westside High School and moreover, the programs in Baltimore City Public Schools. My name is Carl E. Perry. I'm the proud principal of Edmondson Westside High School. We're located in Southwest Baltimore City. We are, as Council President uh, Mosby said, a CTE center. Uh, being designated as a center, we, we have the programs inside of our school as opposed to just a single uh, program. We're a magnet school. Currently, we have uh, entry requirements. However, in school year 21-22, which is next year, we will no longer have entry requirements. We're a citywide program, so my scholars come from all across Baltimore City. We have two buildings. The main building is the Edmondson Building, which in the past used to solely be Edmondson High School. And we have the West Side Skill Center, which is directly across the street. In our Skill Center, that's where the CTE programs take place. CTE, Career Technology Education, is what is formerly known as TRADES. We currently have 
a variety of programs. I'm going to outline the programs for you. Automotive technology, construction, Cisco, which is networking and computer repair, project lead the way, an engineering program, business, which is accounting and finance, which also offers Microsoft certification, culinary arts, baking, allied health, which has nursing and surgical technician, child care, we have a partnership with uh, uh, Head Start, cosmetology, and interactive media productions. In these programs, our scholars can become certified and earn, earn industry certification and begin to work right after high school. There is a proposal by the district and, and the district is moving forward to realign some of the programs and remove some of our programs and create new programs. The programs that, that are slated to be sunset are culinary arts and baking, cosmetology, interactive media productions, project lead the way engineering, and eventually construction. Now, by sunsetting the programs, the programs will be, some programs will be relocated to other buildings. Though they plan on sunsetting these programs, there's an opportunity if we can raise money to keep construction at our site. Uh, that would not leave until 2026, 27 school year. Some of the programs would be replaced with welding, JROTC cybersecurity, and auto body collision repair. These are great opportunities for our children and for the children of Baltimore City, but it's still not enough. The importance of career technology education is to offer scholars the much needed skills and certification opportunities to graduate with and change the world. Some say to become employable, but we teach them how to lead and hopefully take over their chosen areas. Schools used to offer carpentry and home economics to teach basic skills. However, CTE programs offer extensive levels of detail to become industry professionals. They also allow our scholars the opportunity to go off to college while having the skills certification of their choice to use it when they so desire. And an example I use with some of our scholars, you may go to college but if you have that certification in cosmetology, you can earn money in between classes doing hair or cutting hair. So you have both. Everyone may not desire to go to college, but I want you to have the skills and the certification so that if you decide to go to college, you can do so. I do have some success stories that I want to share with you. And I'll be brief because I, I, I can talk a lot. <laughs> Success stories are always happy. For a child to come to school in Baltimore City is a success story. For him or her to cross, cross community boundaries just to get to school, to get to a trade is a success story. Seeing our scholars graduate with jobs already beginning to change their lives is a success story. We have people graduating and going into our partnership with BGE and working on their diesel trucks as mechanics. That's a success story. We have eight seniors earning certification hour at the University of Maryland Medical Center. They can also work after their internship is over, earning money. And if they go to, if they go to school at University of Maryland, it will be free. That's a success story. One of my children from 2016 just posted a picture She's graduating from Coppin State College, Coppin State University. I apologize, I'm showing my age. As a nurse, she came through our, our allied health program. That's a success story. There are, however, some barriers. We have programs that have partnerships. I mentioned BGE. I apologize, I hit, button. I hit the button, technology. I mentioned University of Maryland Medical Center. I mentioned Head Start. Every program needs a partner. Every program needs a partner. We want to bring the professionals into the school to serve as role models, 
part-time instructors, but also to demonstrate to our scholars, this is the success that you too can become. We need more internships, opportunities for our children to go forth in the specific trade of their choice and do greater things. We also need some additional funding. We need funding to enhance the programs to make them more competitive, like our other LEAs, the other jurisdictions, the counties. Take, for instance, our auto mechanic program. One complaint that our, our auto instructors have had for years is they're instructing our young men and young women on antiquated technology. Just imagine if you have a vehicle that's five years old, your warranty is you can bring it to our program. However, if you have a brand new vehicle, my children, once they graduate, have never had access to that vehicle. The new technology inside of that vehicle, they have no knowledge of because they're only working on old vehicles. We need those partnerships so that once they graduate, they have greater employment opportunities. Our scholars need a chance. They need people to believe in their dreams and offer support, not a handout, but a helping hand. Thank you. Mr. Perry, that was great. Before we go on, I know that you know what CTE means. You said it. I know you know what LEA means, but just for our listening audience, for those that are watching, just break those uh, two terms down real quick so everybody knows. CTE stands for Career Technology Education. And as I, as I, as I mentioned, it was formerly known as trades, their career pathways. And there are a variety of career pathways across Baltimore City. We're doing a great job offering opportunities, but additional support will go a long way. And LEA is local education agency. Baltimore City is our LEA. Baltimore County is a separate LEA. Gotcha. I know you and I know, but I want to make sure everybody else was right with us. I right. Thank you, Mr. Perry. So with that, we're going to go over to Mr. Greg Renauba who is with Ironshore Contracting. And if you could just give us, um, A, how did you get into contracting? I know uh, that you work with Ironshore. You not only do contracting, you do consulting, project management. You also do metalwork. Kind of walk us through how you got into it and how you developed Ironshore to do what you're doing right now. Okay. Uh, good evening. And uh, good to see a lot of you guys again. And, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Principal Perry, uh, Council President Mosby, and his staff, thank you guys for reaching out once again. Can everybody hear me okay? I'm a low talker. No, we got you. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> so I immigrated from um, Jamaica. I came here at a young age, ended up going to high school at Poly, graduated from Poly, Wanted to go out of state uh, for college, couldn't afford that, worked for a few years, saved up enough money, went to Morgan State, thought I wanted to do architecture. Instead, I ended up in engineering um, while I was there, decided to do, to do quite a few internships. And in the middle of doing our internships, um, uh, we ended up working, working for Cotton Construction, um, you know, who's, who's an earthwork. Uh, earthwork company. Uh, long story short, worked there as an intern, found out that I like construction, uh, which it, it it pulls heavily from the engineering background and the critical thinking. As time went on, graduated, worked for a few local companies, ended up in roofing backwards and upside down. I was a project manager on the Hippodrome Theater for another company, um, left to work for a local roofing company there. Decided to start Ironshore because I was a project manager looking for a minority company to handle a multi-million dollar contract and we couldn't find one. And so I kind of looked around and said, well, you know, maybe this is a hint and maybe this is an opportunity. Uh, that's a, a broad brush sweep of how, how I, I got into roofing. Since then, we started the company maybe 30. Uh, I started the company 13 years ago or so. Since then, we've grown um, to do a lot of major projects. 
As we've grown, projects such as BWI Airport, um, Morgan State University, that was that was a pride and joy for me. We do many, many buildings there. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, buildings throughout the city. As we've grown, what we've realized is that a lot of the labor is not, it's not localized. And so what I'm realizing is that there needs to be a way for us to reach out to individuals and let them know that, listen, while roofing is something that I never thought I would get in, having an, a civil engineering degree does not say you can be the owner of a roofing company, but I had an opportunity and I took it. What we're looking for is to be able to give an opportunity to other individuals. And we have personally committed that we'll go through 10 if we have to, to get one. However, we can't afford on our own to go through 10 to get one. We've gotten a few of your, your graduates, uh, Principal Perry. We're currently um, looking for interns, uh, both in the field and in the office. We do this on a cyc cyclical basis um, because what we do is very weather dependent. Um, you know, we, we've spoken again with uh, Council President Mosby saying, hey, this program that you're introducing would be very important to us because if we could get subsidized by the government, that would go a long way. If we could get subsidized by uh, possibly other programs, and again, we're not looking for handouts, as I've said before, clearly we're working. Clearly um, we're doing this out of pocket because we're looking to grow the future of the industry. We hire everyone from engineers. Uh, we have individuals that are bat bat bachelorettes. We have people with master's degree. Uh, we have we have accountants on staff. Uh, we have lawyers on staff. Uh, we also have an individual. We right now, if an individual can use a tape measure, if they can use a level, if they can swing a hammer, if they have some sensibility about them, if they can solder, if they can work safely, if they can use a harness, we can use that individual because a lot of times, you know. And this this goes beyond the plethora of just a city. But if we get a project on a base, on a military base, you need a U.S. born citizen or at least someone with a clean background to get on certain of these jobs. And so what happens is you find that those individuals are limited and hard to come by. So if we could pool our resources together and pull some of these people from let's say a trouble past or someone that's not going down the right path or who does not have an opportunity or see a way out. I mean, hand to the sky, I have foremen that make six figures. I have individuals that are assistant to the foreman that make well over 50,000 a year. And so that's a decent living, but we need to teach them this. We need to let them know that the opportunities are out there and that we are capable of doing, of, of doing doing such a such a job. So yeah. Thank you for that, Mr. Malcolm. And that's a great segue back to you, Mr. Council President. No, thank, no, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carl and Carl Greg. And Greg uh, for that. For that. You guys hear the echo? Yeah, we're getting an echo in here. Let's keep talking. I work on seeing how we can fix the echo. Is it a get echo still? Is it a echo still? No, oh, it is. No, oh, it is. Still an echo? Still an echo? What's going on? All right, well, we're gonna try to fight through this echo situation. Probably harder for, Probably me, harder for me than it is for you guys. Is for you guys. Um, um, is it, do you guys still hear echo now? No echo? All right, we're gonna deal with that. All right, perfect. Um, so uh, first and foremost, Colin, Greg, thank you for uh, you know coming back and joining us. You know, we came together a couple of weeks ago, a little over a month ago, to talk about the Dante Barksdale Career Technology Apprenticeship Fund. And I kind of see both of what your core competencies are, what your passions are as converging on this particular fund. For the folks who do not know, Dante Barksdale was an amazing uh, young man, was born and raised in the city of Baltimore, uh, he got caught up in some trouble in the city of Baltimore, um, but ultimately came back uh, as a redemption story to provide uh, real opportunities for young folks on our streets. 
Uh, and he worked in a program called Safe Streets, where he literally risked his life to interrupt violence on a daily basis. He did it so well that people all across the country would ask Dante to come to help them set up their program similar to Safe Streets. Uh, and he literally lived and breathed this program. As a council member on to Annapolis, I had the ability of uh, bonding with, with Tater, uh, creating a friendship. Uh, unfortunately, he was um, senselessly murdered uh, last year. Uh, and with that, uh, I went back to a text message, the last text message, text exchange between myself and Tater, where he talked about not just interrupting violence, but giving real opportunities to our young folks and setting up uh, a job training program for them. Uh, so that gave me the idea uh, of this piece of legislation, the Dante Barksdale Career Technology Apprenticeship uh, 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 legislation. And what it says is for city contractors, um, that we want, we would like to create a fund uh, to help expand, grow, provide resources uh, to CTE programs all across the city. So we've already heard from uh, Carl Perry, the principal uh, at Westside at Emerson, talk about uh, the need for additional resources and additional funds. Um, we're going to go into the open panel discussion now. And first, I'm going to turn to you, Principal um, Perry, uh, and just ask that in the past, we've lost this idea that what most of us grew up to call vocational um, was kind of the wrong path. Um, there was a huge uh, time where we constantly beat into our children. If you're not on the college preparatory path, then you're not necessarily moving in the right direction. But we understand and know vocation CTE programs sit at the core of what many of our services and our operations are. We're going to always need folks that are in carpentry. We're going to always need folks in plumbing. We're going to always need folks that are fixing vehicles or doing electrical work. And these are good, solid paying careers uh, that folks can live on and then ultimately become entrepreneurs with. Um, can you kind of talk about the role of society uh, and how that has created that stigma and how we can go continue to beat that down to provide real opportunities and pathways for folks to wind up to become the Gregory Malcolms of the future or at least work for Greg in the future. Well, think about how we've lived for the past year. Childcare situations have, uh, they, they were shut down and some are still struggling to reopen. We need child care providers. Um, of course, with the pandemic, there were some, some challenges. However, my child care program provides not only daycare providers, but it also prov provides future teachers. In addition, I'll give you an example with my Cisco program. We had to wait, uh, we, we relocated our Cisco lab and we had to wait uh, for ITD because they were working on some other, some other uh, activities across the district. So my seniors for the class of 2020, what they took upon themselves was to relocate, re reroute the lab themselves, not just take the computers and moving computers, but they did the hard wiring themselves. So those essential skills are what's necessary. They're still vital for success for everybody. As I mentioned before, everyone may not desire to go to college. So we need opportunities for that group of children who they don't want to go to college or they just can't go to college. But with a trade that enables them to provide for themselves, to build a, a wonderful career and opportunity like Mr. Malcolm has done, provide for their families and families of others. So we need to get rid of the negative connotation that everybody has to go to college. You do you think do you think do you think Principal Perry that we're moving away from that negative connotation that people are finally accepting uh, that it's important to pour money resources, it's important to direct our young folks to programs like CTE programs in the city. Definitely, it definitely, there's an opportunity to direct funding to the programs to enhance the programs to make them viable programs. Now, now, Principal Perry, how can we? I would assume the perfect match is a child who is ripe and ready for one of your CTE programs who's also passionate and interested in that particular field. I know many times we see children that wind up in certain schools and wind up in certain programs, and that's not really their interest. 
how can we do a better job of identifying sooner children's real interest level? Because I think ultimately that creates a better outcome for everybody. I agree. One thing that we found over the years, and, and I've been a principal uh, for, for 20 years, and I've seen a lot of changes um, across the city. It used to be the parent was selecting the programs. Okay, I want my child to go to Edmonton. You know, I was in automotive technology, so you go and be in that program as well. So we found that some of the children who came to the programs, they weren't really interested. It was not for Correct. them. Correct. So even though they may have registered for the program, they've been accepted into our school, we do trade days. And we call them trade days to provide all of our ninth graders the opportunities because our programs don't begin for the students until the 10th grade. But we provide the opportunities for every every ninth grader to be exposed to each program during trade days. That way they can see for themselves firsthand. Well, you know what? Maybe I don't like automotive technology. Maybe I prefer to be, be a sur surgical technician and work in the operating room. They don't know until they actually see it. See, it's one thing. The district does a marvelous job with the, with the choice fair, where the children come around the choice fair and they go and see different high schools, but they only know about certain schools. But until they see it and they actually have the opportunity to be there and entrenched in it, they won't know the difference. Years ago, I provided my senior the class of 2015, 14, the class of 2014, so we could expose everybody to the trades. Everybody had a, had a sweatshirt. Seniors had a sweatshirt. On the back of the sweatshirt, it said which, which CTE program you were in. The more we expose our children to these opportunities, the more they'll say, hey, I like that. I see what I can do. No, that's that's exactly right. And we see that in, you know, all disciplines of life for our young folks. It's really about providing them uh, productive, safe learning environments and exposing them to future opportunities so they can see what they can become in life and ultimately uh, fight after and go after it. Um, what I'm, I'm going to turn to you now, um, uh, uh, Greg. Uh, when you get children that come into your program, like you said, you'll take 10 to find that right one. And I think I had the ability to meet two or three of them when I was out at your facility, um, you know, a, a month or so ago. What is what is the right? What, what have you seen the characteristics of the, the right person that comes to you? Um, uh, uh, you know, from our CT program, and what can we do better to properly prepare them uh, to, to to be successful in your business? Well, one of the things that we talked about before is the, the current age limitation. So, for instance, my cousin, my cousin's son, he comes with me. However, I cannot take him to the job site because he's not 18 years old. And so um, if someone above us can allow us to bring a 16 or 17 year old onto a job site uh, without incurring the wrath of OSHA or some powers that be, that will then allow us. I mean, imagine being a 16 year old or 17 year old kid and you're able to go on the top of the Bromo Seltz building to be able to go on the top of uh, Camden Yards, to be able to go on the top of BWI. And, uh, you know, and that, that creates, that, that adds to your imagination. What we look for um, are individuals that, that are passionate, that are about quality, that are about growing, because we don't just want to teach them trades, but we want to teach them a skill set, which will also allow them to be leaders um, in their communities. Which I mean, imagine, and this this is my my out there thought that I think Principal Perry, Perry, you and I are on the same page. But if we find a group of ten and we find that one leader and we teach that leader a trade, he or she now is able to get two or three of their friends. And I say, listen, I need you to build a crew around you. You will be the boss. And you will then be in charge of these people and you and your crew can accomplish and drive around Baltimore City and say, we built this city. We did that project. We did that project. And that creates that sense of pride that then trickles down. They won't be throwing trash on the street because after all, I went to Morgan State, but I also helped to build Morgan, Morgan State, not only theoretically, financially, but physically. I can point to seven buildings that I've been on. So we look for individuals that are saying, listen, I am looking for a way out. I didn't start out to say I wanted to own a roofing company. That, that was the furthest thing from my mind, but it was an opportunity. And so there are individuals that are looking for positive opportunities 
that want to grow with the background that Principal Perry provides with the opportunity that this uh, program will provide, it will marry them quicker so that we find that out before life sets in. It kind of knocks the wind out of you sometimes. And so what we're looking for are those individuals that, for instance, I have a CNC router downstairs. Principal Perry, I'm sure that means a lot to you, right? And so if I could get one or two of your people that say, hey, let me come and play on this machine, you'll be surprised. It's like we can we can we can take those individuals from doing not only paneling, but we can all of a sudden turn teach them how to be artistic, teach them how to be how to design signs. And next thing you know, we'll be doing signs all over the all over the city of Baltimore from an individual that is that that wants to learn. Because that that's the part we have to realize the skill set and the imagination. I can't for me to go to the squeegee guy and say, hey, let me help you to make $40,000 a, a year. That, that's too far of a grasp. And so for me to go to the high school student and say, I'm going to show you how to make 100000 it's like, no, I can teach you a skill that can allow you to grow in your career and allow you to provide for not only your family, but also your friends. Now, Greg, your, your story, story is amazing. Story is amazing. Um, from, from, from being in Baltimore City, growing up in the city, being a product of Baltimore City Public Schools, going to D. Morgan State University, graduating with an electrical engineering degree, and now sitting with a multi-million dollar company here in the city of Baltimore. Can you talk, tell the listening audience, when I'm constantly talking about the importance of supporting local minority women-owned businesses here in the city of Baltimore, your cultural connectivity, your ability to look into these young folks' eyes and see yourself, but more importantly, in turn, it, their ability of seeing their future potential in you. Can you talk to us about the importance of why having local companies, having companies that are reflective of the communities in which they serve provides a multitude of, 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 of uh, opportunity growth and residual effects for our communities uh, as we talk about trying to grow and sustain the city of Baltimore. Uh, I'll, I'll piggyback off the last big word you use, which is sustainability. Um, if we recycle it, remember a few years ago, they talked about recycling the dollar. If we keep the dollar in the community, that the, the buying power of the, of the dollar increases for our community. And so you have an individual uh, that can relate to Baltimore. You have an, an individual that can walk the streets. I like to say, I have the ability to walk two worlds. Yesterday, we were at BWI with the governor. Today, we're sitting here talking to you with the city. Simultaneously, we were in Towson uh, talking to the talking to them about a potential project out there, and so knowing Baltimore, knowing the nuances of it, having been there, where it's like you know, for lack of a better word, I remember where I got pulled over and that on that street. I remember being in Park Heights. I remember this that, and the other. I remember what Pimlico was. I remember what Pimlico is going to be. I remember when there was no Harbor East. I remember, you know, I remember Drew Hill down at the Inner Harbor, singing and giving out fudge. You know, there are things like that that speaks to the passion that allows us to come back to Baltimore and say, I am proud of the city. I am proud of the things that it has done for me. And because of that, it, it allows us to want to give back to say, if I can find someone like me, if I can find someone like you that has the same path as you, uh, uh, Council President, because your story is an amazing one. You, you walk the streets of Baltimore, right? And, and so we, we had to figure out ways to dodge it. And I think the more important thing is we show them that it can be done. If I can do it, so can you. That, that's the most important part. I, I can tell you stories of my friends going to the gas station and getting arrested and not coming back. I can tell you stories of getting pulled over on the street for no reason. So not being, and that, that kind of sounds like the all-American story, but Again, to be able to go through those things and still succeed, uh, you know, by your definition of success, I believe can go a long way. And it, it makes it seem more attainable than if it was just some random person flying in on a jet to say, hey, come on, you know, touch the hem of my garment, for lack of a better word, and you, you two can be like me. And combining your passion 
um, your experience uh, and your relatability to our young folks just is natural. It makes sense, right? Um, so that's why, again, you know, supporting local, small minority women-owned businesses is so important and is at the core of all we are constantly pushing here uh, on the city council. I'm going to turn it back to you, uh, Principal Perry. And um, we talk about, you know, our young folks, um, and we talk about CTE programs, and we talk about some of the issues with programs. When you're saying like we need to say raise money for the construction program, like what more can the city do uh, to ensure, particularly as it relates to Emerson Westside, that you guys have all that you need uh, to be successful going forward, particularly with the new plans around consolidation of some of the programs? Well, in regards to raising the funds, our facilities are outdated. You know, we have, I mentioned the fact that we have two buildings. Um, there's a proposal to, with the sunsetting of some of the programs, to sunset the programs to get the funding from the state to renovate the Edmondson building. We need to be able to compete. If you go to, uh, say, certain schools, maybe uh, Carver in the county, and look at their facilities, their facilities alone set them apart. Then they have the technology as well. We're not, you're asking us to build uh, the ideal student, but we don't have the ideal resources for the students and our students deserve it. They deserve the very best. We're not just saying just throw money. We're, we're saying make it level the playing field, level the playing field, you know, if a child goes to a school, let me just put it to you this way. I'm nearing the 30th year of my career. I have never been able to drink out of a water fountain in a city school. Never. So if a child goes to a school and, and they don't have the adequate supplies, the adequate resources, how much are they going to feel as though they can invest or want to invest in their own future? We need to be fair about it. We really need to raise funds so that our children and, and, and our district is doing a, 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 an admirable job of building new schools, but it's still not enough. Yeah. Edmondson Westside High School is the only CTE center that has not been renovated. The three centers are Edmondson, Carver, and Mervo or Mergenthal. Those two have been renovated for years. But Edmondson still has the same facility that it had 30, 40 years ago. Now, with the new plan, all of the programs that are going to stay, all of their um, rooms and facilities will be upgraded. Is that the plan that you know of? The plan is uh, to move to renovate the A building, which is the Edmondson building, and yeah. move, everything, move everything into that building. Yeah, and then all the programs that stay will have all new facilities in that building, correct? correct. 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 But there's still additional money needed for the construction program that can fit inside of the main Emerson campus building, right? Yes, I believe the number quoted was $1.5 million. So we could retain that. In construction, I know the district has talked about welding, but our construction program is just that construction. It's not just carpentry. They work on electric, electrical work, plumbing, and welding. So, so, so a child in the CTE, so a child learns all three of those disciplines? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. So it's, it's like a, a light construction program where you get access to see multi multitude of different um, disciplines. Yes. Got it. Got it. Now we'll turn back to you, uh, uh, Brother Malcolm. Um, just as it relates to uh, being a small business in the city of Baltimore, um, you know, what are the challenges that are presented to you? Um, it's not, it's not the easiest thing. You know, we hear about it on TV, um, but you are living and breathing it. One thing you said early in the introduction is like your business kind of almost goes with the weather. Um, if everything's nice, people don't know that they have a leaky roof or a problem with the roof if you're not out doing a big capital job. But just managing a small business, could you just kind of talk to us about the challenges uh, that you faced uh, when you decided to take this uh, on a, uh, a decade or so ago? You're, you're on mute. Is that it? Not it? Not it? 
Yeah. There we go. We got you. Got me now or no? Yep, we got you. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I, I hopefully that fixed the echo situation that you guys were telling me about. Um, anyway, I, yeah, there's so many things from funding to being able to hire skilled personnel, from being able to purchase uh, to also getting a foothold in the in the in the community because there there's a a, a myth that minority companies can't do certain things. Um, you know, we've we've single. Can, can you break that? Can you break that myth for us real quick? Let us know some of the projects that uh, that that you have been able to participate in. Um, we've done all three casinos. We've worked on all three casinos uh, from the Horseshoe, uh, Maryland Live, all the way down to uh, National Harbor. Um, we have worked on the last two expansions of BWI. Um, both the E, the E pair, and the A, the A pair, the Southwest extension. As mentioned before, we take pride and joy in re-roofing Morgan State. My personal pride is to stand on the building that I graduated from and got my degree from, and I put a brand new roof on it. Uh, they had a problem, but we took care of it. Um, <laughs> so, so at the end of the day, and as I mentioned, Broma Seltzer being on top of that, being on top of Camden, Camden Yards. Uh, we can we can go on and on, uh, you know, just 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 to to be able to do it. And one of the big aha moments for me was standing on top of the Mormon Temple down at a, down on 495 because it kind of comes out at you as you're t driving around 495. And so it's a different perspective, uh, literally, to stand on top of the Mormon Temple and look down on everything else that's going. And so it. It, it allows the child in me to kind of stand up and say, wow, you know, I'm glad I took this risk. The challenge is really and truly um, is finding people that will stick to it. This is hard work and, and I have a lot of respect and I tell my guys all the time, I work just as hard for you as you work for me. And so the brain power that it takes to actually go out, bid a project, estimate that this is how much it's going to cost and then to actually turn around and do it for that amount of money and make money and make payroll and pay your bills and keep the lights on. Uh, those are challenges that no amount of schooling can, can teach you. And, you know, I've personally, I've had, as I said earlier today on another call, I've had some incredible wins, but I was, I've also had some incredible losses. One of the challenges that's coming at us right now, even about this funding, is you know speaking to as I mentioned earlier, cotton construction. He said one of his problems is being being a part of the union. If he then calls the union, he doesn't get first dibs on the qualified people. We've chosen to remain non-union, and we're able to go out. But that being said, I've made a commitment that we're going to build them, and I don't know if it's going to take two years, five years, one year. We can find that one individual. And once that fire catches on, we'll find another Barksdale, right? And that's what we're looking for is a way to, to create that individual that spreads a fire that says, well, hey, while I'm in roofing, you might be the individual that's doing shipping and packaging. You might be the individual that's doing marketing. You might be the individual that's able to go out and do carpentry, do plumbing, do the electrical work, do painting, do paving, do earthwork, do sewer. And so that that those things and those skill sets of finding those individuals we've we've gone to the prison system we've gone to the homeless shelters um and that that's how passionate i am about finding a pool of individuals that really want to learn a trade and really want to work and so at the end of the day if we can partner with schools such as principal perry we met you through the city of baltimore that's who that's who introduced us to you only to find out we're seven minutes apart away from each other right <laughs> and so that that's kind of how the world works. But one of the biggest challenges, not only here, and I and I promise you this, Baltimore, everyone that's listening to me, this manpower situation is nationwide. So if Baltimore leads the forefront of creating an army of laborers, imagine if Baltimore is able to just like Barksdale did go out and say, hey, Detroit, this is what you can do. Hey, Chicago, this is what you can do. Uh, you know, name a city, any city in all of Baltimore, in, in all of the United States, 
states, uh, Louisiana, this is what you can do. And so if we can crack this code, I guarantee you it's, 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 a, it's a literal fountain of youth that we can share throughout the entire, throughout the entire country. No, thank so, you for uh, that. Mr. So I'm gonna go to you, Derek. Do we have a yeah. questions that any questions online that we, do, uh, we think are good to, to erase? We do, and I want to piggyback this question piggybacks right off of what Mr. Malcolm just talked about. The question is how do we connect neighborhood organizations and CDCs to businesses like Mr. Malcolm to connect that interest with the youth in CTE to the community? so that students can get real-time experience working directly in the community. So now we're talking about merging all three facets, the businesses like Mr. Malcolm's with the CTE programs and the students like Mr. Perry working directly in neighborhoods that may need some work and students can get that real-time experience. So how do we make that, how do we bridge those three worlds and bring them together? I don't know who needs to answer, but there you go. I mean, it seems like maybe part legislation and be interested. I, I've always had an idea when I was a city council person in the 7th district um, at Carver, we had an idea of trying to take a one of the abandoned homes in the area and literally donating it to the school. So, you know, in working in conjunction with the company, the carpentry, the roofing, the plumbing, the electricity, but allowing the students to participate in it per their curriculum, per their um, um, uh, their studies. Um, because I think once young folks outside of you know the shops in the in the classroom, but young once young folks are able to utilize their hands to rebuild their communities, I think that that exposes them to a whole nother level of of of, of being connected to the work being passionate about the work and caring about the work in a different way. Uh, so, you know, you know, no, no program is in place right now. Definitely as, you know, um, looking forward as a city council president uh, to help re reinvigorate uh, the spirit that we had at the time. We're trying to develop that program with Carver and potentially we'll be reaching out to you, uh, Principal Perry, for that. I guess, uh, Principal Perry, Brother Malcolm, do you guys have uh, anything to add uh, to that? I will say if we don't have the answer, that means we need to create the answer. I and like so that, that. That very question might be the answer that we're looking for, right? If if us as leaders in what we do can't say do A, B, C, maybe we take that and we make that our passion for the next X window and say, how can we crack that nut? What's a what's a combination to doing that? My first thought is, as you said, pick a project, pick a location. It doesn't have to be rebuild this entire block uh you know let's just build one a house park. yeah let's do a house let's take a let's let's take a street corner and say hey guys we're going to clean this up we're going to come out here uh pour concrete uh you know make sure that the, there are no trip hazards make sure that that the, the 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 soil the grass the sod the landscaping uh the, you know it can start simple and then we can grow it from there we can plant a tree and we can tell the kids, hey, this is your tree, protect it. You know, this is your corner, you built it, protect it. And so, again, it doesn't have to be roofing, but it comes down to funding as a business owner, right? My number one thing is to, is to turn a profit. And so at some point, if we can figure out a way to, to balance, you know, the philan philanthropy, philanthropy, uh, my Jamaican's coming out, right? The philanthropy, <laughs> that's another, that's another thing, right? <laughs> but so we can balance the philanthropy and the profitability, uh, which is where programs such as this comes in, come in, uh, where we're currently, um, you know, as you know, there's a lot going on in South Baltimore. I'm not sure what I can say and what I can't, but there's a lot of work going on in South Baltimore right now, let's say on the waterfront. And, uh, and, and we are working with developers and contractors there for workforce development. Whether we get the contract or not, we're, we're literally, um, prior to COVID, we had worked it out with the city where the students were going to come to my facility. I have a lot of space here and we were gonna have them come to our facility and we were going to dedicate space to the students so that they can use our machines, so that they can use our tools, they can use that. However, 
uh, we have to work out the cost. You know, the cost of lumber is astronomical now. And so, again, we would need a program such as such as what we're here talking about to fund, to, to help, if not funded 100%, at least bolster, bolster some of the costs so that we can actually keep that program going. Principal Perry, any any comment to that? Uh, yes. Uh, in the past, well, pre-COVID, of course, we provided services to the community. For instance, we, we would have days where um, people would bring their cars to get service. Uh, we, think we could change brakes. They even install some, uh, put in brand new motors for some people. You just have to buy the equipment and I'll buy a kid some pizza or something like that. We've also had our geriatric nursing assistants working in, in um, uh, nursing homes. Once again, pre-COVID, they work, work in there, they would get certification and then have, have full-time employment there after they graduated from school. We also had our cosmetology students working on geriatric um, uh, residents hair as well. So we offer services to the community. Um, our culinary arts program also uh, provides culinary uh, treats to people. And our construction program, currently they're building sheds. They'll take an order from someone and they'll build a shed, a wooden shed, they'll build it, and then we'll uh, help to deliver it there. So we offer, we offer different services to everyone. Now, Derek, uh, any, um, any additional questions or concerns out there? No. At, not at this time, we are going to a close to wrap up. I am sharing on the screen right now the information and websites for both uh, Principal Perry and his school, Edmonton Westside, as well as uh, owner, CEO, Gregory Malcolm and his business, so that everybody out there can go check out their websites and get all the good information that they need, their contact information and whatever else they may need uh, to reach out to the two gentlemen. Got it. Well, Principal Perry and uh, Gregory Malcolm, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules uh, to chop it up again with me. Again, you know, we were out at Ironshore Contracting, um, i say like a month, month and a half ago, uh, where we announced uh, the program that we talked about earlier. Um, you know, I look forward to that just being like the first of many. This is the second of many of interacting with folks who really, really care about our young folks, who really care about our city. And I think we can constantly talk about, again, the systemic issues that plague our communities, um, but we're, we're not really investing in the things that are the foundation that will pour to the sustainability of growth in our city. What are we talking about? And that's creating these pipelines of opportunities for our young folks and creating bustling businesses that are centered in our city uh, that's reflective of our city. Uh, and that's what we'll constantly push as policy and legislation out of the body of the city council. So from the bottom of my heart to the citizens of Baltimore, thank you uh, again for tuning in uh, to this uh, latest town hall. Please be on the lookout for other additional uh, town halls in the future. Uh, Principal Perry, continue to be great. I'm always here for you, as well as Brother Malcolm. Uh, so thank you again. Thank you. Talk soon, Principal Perry. Thank you. Great seeing you, Mr. Malcolm. Everybody be safe. Take care, gentlemen. Thank you. Have a great evening.